I'm Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez and God has called and commissioned me to preach the good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friend, I encourage you as I share a message with you and I pray for you today. Be in agreement, connect in faith, believe and you shall receive in the name of Jesus. Hello, hello, hello to you, my dear friend. Welcome to another video brought to you by GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry. It is so good to be with you today on another day that God has given us by His grace and by His special, special, special grace, we will make it through. It is indeed another day to live to the fullest and it is indeed another day that we can do what God has called us to do. My dear friend, as you know, today is Friday and on Friday we pray Friday financial prayers, but the Lord has led me to share a message. And this message is all round. It will impact even in the area of your work, even in the area of your business. So it's so important that we do this. We're going to pray for peace around the world so that we can continue doing what God has called us to do. We should pray for peace. As born again believers, we should be lovers of peace. And we should be known as people who promote peace. And this is why we should walk in the way that we pray for peace and that we encourage peace and that we ourselves are people who bring peace. Now, the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 5, it says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Now, I want to read that one more time and let's discuss this. It says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. We see so much of this happening. We see so much narcissism happening around the world. People care more about themselves than the people around them. It's all about me. What can I get? What can I gain? How can I improve myself? How can I go up and push others down? This is what we see in the world today. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Nowadays we are seeing a generation who is so disobedient to parents that, you know, they turn on their parents and some of them even get their parents in trouble. They get their parents arrested. When the parents are trying to correct them or to discipline them, they get their parents arrested. You know, these are the times that we're living in. And as born-again believers, we should never be ignorant of the times that we're living in. It says disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. You know, I've met so many people. You might have made a mistake about 20 years ago. But 20 years later, they are still holding on to that grudge. They have not moved on from that 20 years ago. They still hate you and they are holding on to that grudge. Unforgiving, slanderers. I've met so many people who speak bad about men and women of God. I've met so many people. I've seen so many people. I've seen people online and on various TV programs and platforms speaking down about other men and women of God. They don't know the men and women of God. They've never lived with them. They've never ever spent a minute with them. And yet they think they know how the men and women of God live. I've had people slander me. They don't know me. They don't know what I do. They don't know that I pray and I seek God. But they, they, they've, they've slandered me. We're living in a time when there will be slanderers. It goes on and it says, without self-control. We see people who lack self-constraint. They lack self-constraint. It's so important that we have the ability to constrain ourselves in such a time. It goes on and it says, Brutal, 
despisers of good. Nowadays, we are living in a time when if you decide to live in a way that is good and righteous, if you decide to say, I follow Jesus, it is almost as if it's even a shame to say the name of Jesus in public. People look at you and they think there's something wrong with you because you're saying the name of Jesus. In fact, we've seen so many people try to block the name of Jesus, but they don't block any other name. They block the things that are good. They block the things that are righteous. And it's time that we as born-again believers make a stand. It's time that we as born-again believers stop just keeping quiet and receiving what people are imposing on us. We should not just keep quiet and receive what the devil is forcing down on us. But we must stand up for what we believe in. We must stand up for our faith. We must stand up so that we can be freely able to say the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ freely. It says despisers of good, traitors. In this time period, I've had so many messages from so many people of how they've been betrayed. Their best friend turned on them, stabbed them in the back and threw them under the bus. And only God saved them. If it wasn't for God, they wouldn't be around today. So there's so many traitors in this time period because people are lovers of themselves. They only care about themselves. It's so important that we as born again believers in this time period be the difference. It goes on and it says headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. We've seen so many people. They love pleasure. They love the things that bring pleasure. And when you talk about God, because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit that comes along with the message of God and the message of Christ, they become very angry at you. Sometimes they will even persecute you. Sometimes they will even beat you up and attack you. It is so important that we as born again believers be the difference. It says having a form of godliness, but denying its power. You see, in this time period, we are living in a time when people are compromising on the word, having a form of godliness. So they go to church on Sunday and they try to act like good people, but they are denying the Christ and his power. They are denying the anointing. I've seen some people call a genuine move of God and they are trying to taint the image of a genuine move of God and call it a Kundalini spirit. I'm not saying that all uh, these accusations are wrong. You know, in some cases you can discern that what is happening is wrong. But in some places you can see that it's the genuine move of the Holy Spirit of God and people are trying to taint this and put it in the wrong way because they don't like the move of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They deny the anointing. They deny the move and the flow of the anointing of the Christ on our lives. So it goes on and it says, and from such people turn away. It is so important, my dear friend, that you as a born again believer, filled with the spirit of the living God, do not associate with such people. But why did I share this? I shared this so that we can pray. Because prayer is more powerful than the most powerful weapon you can find around the world. Prayer is so powerful and prayer can buy us time. So far, as I've been watching prophetically, prayer has bought us time. The saints around the world have been praying and we will continue to pray until God does something. God will give us time even as we pray. Today, let us pray for the world. Let us pray for peace and let us pray that God will continue to give us opportunities to do what we do best. Opportunity is to walk in that purpose and destiny. Opportunities to get a job and provide honestly and reasonably for our families. Opportunities to go up in life, even in this time period when people might be biased against us because of our faith. Opportunities that we will be freely able to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he has done in our lives. Let us pray and let us trust God and he will take you to a greater glory, my dear friend. It is so important that these matters are touched on because if they are not touched on, then we won't pray. It is so important that we know what to pray so that God can give us time. As God gives us time, we'll be able to fulfill 
As God gives us time, we'll be able to fulfill what we need to fulfill in this time period, and you will go to a greater glory. So in saying that, let us go into a time of prayer. Take your cell phone, your device, wherever you're watching me from. Just go somewhere private where you can pray, where you can seek God. And even as you go there, begin to lift up praises to God. As your praises go up, the blessings of God will come down and God will touch and He'll change your life forever. So in saying that, let us begin to praise Him. Father, You are our God and we praise You. We glorify Your holy name, we magnify Your holy name, we lift up Your holy name. You alone are holy, you alone are worthy, you alone deserve the glory, you alone deserve to be lifted up even today, right now, even as we are seeking you. Be lifted up and be glorified in my life and in my dear friend's life. And as you do what only you can do in my dear friend's life, receive all the praise and may Jesus be glorified. I pray this in Jesus' name and I thank you for it, Lord. Amen and Amen. My dear friend, you are blessed and you cannot be cursed. Now we're going to go into a time of prayer and as we begin to pray, I want to encourage you to do three things. The first and the most important is welcome the Holy Spirit. Say this out loud. Say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you in this place. Come and help me to pray. Help me to pray about what is important, even in this time period. Reveal to me what I need to pray about. I pray this in Jesus' name. My dear friend, the second thing that I want to encourage you to do is comment down below in the comment section and agree with me. There is so much power in agreement and even as you comment and agree, God is going to bless you. The third thing, if you've got a prayer request and you want me to pray with you and for you, simply go to my website, go to www.gabrielfernandezministries.org and click on daily prayer list. Fill in your prayer request, click submit. It's going to come through to me and I'm going to trust God with you. But in saying that, let us begin to pray. Father, I pray for my dear friend. Wherever my dear friend is right now, begin to touch, begin to change, begin to heal, begin to deliver, and begin to take my dear friend to a greater glory and a greater altitude. Father, I pray for the world right now. I pray for peace around the world and peace for your children. Help your children wherever they are. Help my dear friend who's watching this video, your dear son, my dear friend who's watching this video, your dear daughter, to make the right decisions and to make the right choices. If it is in a time of elections to elect the right person, the person who stands up for you and for your principles and morals and standards. We give you praise and thank you that you are a good God. And you take heed to the prayers of your children. And even as we pray, you are taking heed to our prayers. Father, there are so many wicked things that happen around the world, even in this time period. We are praying for those who have been uh, kidnapped, those who have been taken against their will. Father, provide a way that they will have a way of escape. Provide a way that they will be saved out of that ordeal. Father, we pray for those who are going through unusual attack and persecution. Provide a way that they will escape. We pray for those in leadership who are trying to take a right stand, but have been beaten up and their names have been slandered. Father, provide a way that they will be able to escape. We pray for all your children around the world, that we will have more time to fulfill the purpose and destiny and to finish the good work that you started in our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for my dear friend, my dear friend, your dear son, my dear friend, your dear daughter. Wherever they're watching, distance is not a barrier. Touch, change, heal, deliver, and set free my dear friend and my dear friend's family. And Lord, I pray that you will provide opportunities for my dear friend. Provide time that even persecution that is meant to come will be delayed so that my dear friend will have more time in order to fulfill that purpose and destiny. That even blockages and barriers and things that the devil plans to do will be squashed, will be destroyed, will not prosper against my dear friend. Any weapon that has been formed against my dear friend will misfire and fire in the wrong direction and completely miss my dear friend. Any trap that has been set against my dear friend will be exposed. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for ministers around the world. Father, raise up a godly generation of ministers, a group of ministers that are after your own heart. Raise up a generation of born-again believers and ministers, men and women of God who care about you, care about your kingdom, care about your vision, not our own vision, not our own will, not our own fame or publicity, but we care about your kingdom. I pray this in Jesus' name that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do this for the glory of King Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it, Lord. Amen and amen. My dear friend, I want to end off by saying, stand up for what you believe in. Make God's word the standard for your life, and don't be afraid to decree and declare proudly that God is your Lord. Jesus Christ is your savior and make God's word the standard for your life and wherever anyone tempts you to go otherwise and go in a way that is opposing to the way of the word of God tell them plainly that you cannot do that because it is against your morals your standards and your beliefs in the name of Jesus and that will protect you and it will ensure that you enjoy the blessing that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow because there's a blessing that comes with sorrow, and that is not from God. But the blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow is a blessing that doesn't weigh down on the conscience, and that is a blessing from God. It comes with all the fruits of the Holy Spirit with it. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and the list goes on. In the name of Jesus, receive such a blessing. You and your family and your children in Jesus' mighty name. Until tomorrow, for myself, Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez, God bless you and goodbye. In saying that, my dear friend, we come to the end of this video. If you are blessed by this video and you feel led to donate or to partner with us to support us in this work that we are doing, then you can do so through PayPal or Patreon. All the links are provided in the description. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye.